Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 21st, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start with a little bit older story, actually, but it only sort of hit the news uh, last week. Happened October 3rd, at least that's uh, when uh, Microsoft officially made public that for about a month, their cloud services did not deliver complete logs. The tricky part here was actually that it was not a complete logging outage, so you still received some logs, just not all of them, and that's always a little bit tricky to detect if you're missing some logs, in particular in a cloud environment where you are not actually controlling some of the logging infrastructure. But it, of course, uh, puts up the question, how do you know that you're not receiving logs? And uh, the easiest thing that you can probably do is just monitor your hourly daily log volume, see if there's any substantial changes here. Not clear if uh, the amount of logs being lost here would have been detected by any measure like that. And then, of course, you definitely must detect if there are no logs at all. For any extended period of time, another trick, of course, is just to compare the composition of your logs, see if certain log types are all of a sudden missing or showing up at a lesser frequency. This can even be sometimes be an indicator of an attack or an attacker messing with your logs or, of course, performance issues with your systems. In particular, tricky here is that Microsoft Entra was affected by uh, this outcome outage and as a result you may have missed some of the sign-in logs and activity logs that you're usually getting from Microsoft Entra. Then I saw a few news article featuring uh, research papers published uh, by researchers from ETH uh, Zurich in Switzerland that uh, interrogate some of the claims that are being made by end-to-end encrypted cloud storage platforms. Now, what they found is, I think, actually not a surprise, and that is that if an attacker has control over a server at one of these end-to-end encrypted cloud storage platforms, well, that they're able to read your data. And that uh, somewhat counters the marketing claims being made by some of these systems. The big problem here is that just like when you're dealing with TLS, if uh, the server is uh, broken, is compromised, they may very well give you bad keys. And as a result, they will, of course, be able to decrypt the data. And that's exactly the basic threat scenario here. If you are dealing with a bad actor that has control over one of the endpoints, they're typically able to send you bad code, meaning bad keys, and then they're able to decrypt your data just uh, by basically breaking the underlying reliance on the integrity of the server. The only fix somewhat here is to completely rely on client-generated keys, but that also means that the code being used to generate those keys on the client is actually coming from the client and not first downloaded from one of the servers. So what can you do about this? Well, um, don't trust those uh, systems and make sure that any data that you are uploading to any kind of cloud provider, if you want it to be encrypted, you better encrypt it on the client using client-provided software, client-provided keys before you let any server-provided software touch the data. And talking about the trust in the software supply chain, organizations in Israel apparently were being hit by malware that claimed to originate from antivirus company ESET. What made this claim more plausible was that it actually originated from an Israeli reseller of ESET software. That reseller apparently was compromised and then used to distribute the software, ESET states that they themselves were not actually a factor in this uh, compromise. Then a couple vulnerabilities and updates I want to mention. First of all, Synology released a security advisory addressing a remote code execution and denial of service vulnerability in the Synology camera firmware. 
Secondly, we do have a vulnerability that was addressed in the Spring framework. It uh, could allow attackers uh, to read files from the server. And finally, there is a critical update for Grafana, the uh, dashboard uh, software that does fix a critical vulnerability that could lead to, lead to local file inclusion via SQL expressions. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks for feedback that I'm receiving. Thanks for also liking this podcast in your favorite podcast platform. And of course, thanks for any positive reviews. That's it. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.